This is the Roadrunner, an autonomous rocket drone announced in November 2023 by Andural Industries, a technology startup focused on autonomous drones that is revolutionizing the U.S. defense sector. It has a modular payload on the nose, which can be configured for intelligence and reconnaissance missions. Or, in the Roadrunner M variant, it can carry an explosive warhead and intercept kamikaze-style missiles, drones, or other jet-propelled aircraft. It's not controlled by a person, it's all AI. It stays inside this box, which is its launch base, and can be deployed to any location, waiting if necessary for months until the launch when a threat is detected. An operator still needs to confirm the attack action, and if the threat is not confirmed, it can return and land, similar to SpaceX rockets. There isn't much data available about the drone yet, but it is reported to have a carbon fiber body and two jet engines that allow it to reach high subsonic speeds, likely around 980 kilometers per hour or 609 miles per hour, in addition to having high maneuverability, achieving g-forces that would be impossible for a human. According to the company, compared with similar drones, it has three times the warhead payload capacity, ten times the one-way effective range, and is three times more maneuverable, according to them, of course. The landing system for rocket reusability seems expensive for a kamikaze drone, but I believe it will be used against more valuable targets than a low-cost drone. For that, they have other drones. The exact cost is not known, but the U.S. Special Operations Command spent $19 million on several units to deploy it in the field in 2024. So, one unit should cost between $100,000 and $500,000, which aligns with the statement from the company itself. It's not even close to a Patriot missile, which currently costs $4 million and is used against state-of-the-art drones. Of course, if you shoot down a few low-cost drones, the costs start to pile up. And in fact, we have a very close ally of ours that was dealing uh, with a uh, adversary that was using the small quadcopter UASs, and they shot it down with a Patriot missile. Now, that worked. They got it, okay, and we love Patriot missiles, and I know there's folks out there that build them and sell them, and they're great. They're a high-demand, low-density item. The problem is, they, that on the kinetic exchange ratio, the Patriot won, okay? That quadcopter that cost 200 bucks from Amazon.com did not stand a chance against the Patriot. On the economic exchange ratio, I'm not sure that's a good economic exchange ratio. In fact, if I'm the enemy, I'm thinking, hey, I'm just going to get on eBay and buy as many of these $300 quadcopters as I can and expend all the Patriot missiles out there. But the damage from taking these attacks could be much worse. In the case of the landing and reusability of the Roadrunner M, it makes sense to consider launching it against a potential enemy aircraft, which has not yet been confirmed. It could monitor the aircraft in flight until the threat is confirmed or not. This reduces the response time and prevents tragedies like the one in 2020 when Iran mistakenly shot down a Ukrainian commercial passenger plane, thinking it was a retaliation from the US after Iran's attack on an American base in Iraq. The drone could also be useful in the scenario between Taiwan and China, where Chinese fighter jets frequently fly over the region but do not engage in attacks. And it can be launched in a swarm, together with other types of drones. And if one of the others shoots down the target first, the rest of them can return to base. And according to the company, in future versions, the Roadrunner will be able to destroy targets without having to destroy itself in the process. It may seem small, but it's the size of a person. Just look at it next to the company's founder. This guy dressed like an unemployed person who is actually a billionaire. He founded Oculus VR in 2012, which made the Oculus Rift. Two years later, at the age of 21, he sold the company to Zuck for $2 billion. Not bad. Yeah. Something that it's... you think is very cool. Check this out. Wow. So that's pretty neat. This is so freaking cool. Look, I, you know, my previous company was Oculus VR. I started that when I was 19 years old, living in a camper trailer, sold it to Facebook for a few billion dollars. Yeah, self-praise is quite cringe. You know, I relate to him. I also have several million dollar ideas, but 99% of the time when I search online, I find that someone in China is already selling it super cheap and even better than what I had imagined. And when I don't find the product, I remember that I would have to spend years researching and developing it. Then I get discouraged and go back to my routine, regretting having wasted a day researching the topic. But aside from that and the bank account, Palmer Look, and I are a lot alike. Yes, my VR. son, you are. I started that you when are. I was 19 years old, living in a camper trailer, sold it to Facebook for a few billion dollars.
In 2017, he founded the startup Endural, currently valued at $8.5 billion. Despite being a new company, it has already developed various autonomous equipment for the defense sector. Many of them were already being developed by other companies that Anduril acquired, such as this autonomous submarine, the Dive LD. In 2022, it announced that it closed a $100 million contract with the Royal Australian Navy to develop and produce three extra-large underwater drones. Another one is this autonomous observation and combat drone, the Fury, originally produced by Blue Force Technologies, acquired by Anduril in 2023. This other one, the Altius, is a low-cost drone launched from a tube, from a ground vehicle, or from an aircraft like the C-130, a Black Hawk, or even from another autonomous drone like the Kratos XQ-58 Valkyrie, and can operate in conjunction with others, in a swarm formation. It has a range of 440 kilometers, or 276 miles, and can land on its belly, or even be recovered by a quadcopter with suspended cables and hooks on the wings of the Altius, which is captured and slides to the ground. It can carry a modular payload in the nose, which can be electronic warfare or monitoring equipment, or even an explosive warhead operating as a kamikaze. It was developed by the company Area One, a subsidiary of Anduril, acquired by them in 2021, and it's already in operation by the US Army. There are several others, such as the Ghost, with a low acoustic signature, making it difficult to be detected, and which is also already used in military reconnaissance operations in the US and the UK and the Anvil, which is a drone designed to attack other drones, simply by reaching speeds of 320 km per hour, or 200 miles per hour, and colliding with them. This solution is kind of funny, but practical. And all these equipment can be controlled by the Lattice platform, which gathers data from all connected devices in the system, such as vehicles, radars, and their monitoring tower. Then it uses artificial intelligence to classify objects. The system presents everything on a map that can be viewed on a computer, a mobile phone, or on an Oculus virtual reality headset. Hmm, where have I seen this before? After that, the user can mark the detected drone, missile, or manned aircraft as hostile, and the lattice system shows some response options. And unlike traditional defense systems, which are complex to operate, in this one, they sought a friendly, intuitive interface, like on a smartphone or in a game. The idea is that a single soldier can operate dozens of drones. If a swarm of enemy drones approaches the base, lattice will identify and warn the operator, who with a few clicks, can send their own drones to counterattack. The development of autonomous drones also begins to render obsolete one of the primary defenses against such attacks, which is to interfere with the radio signal between the drone and the satellite, disrupting communication with the operator. This makes these destructive counterattacks increasingly important. The recent conflicts have shown a trend of shifting from a few large and expensive vehicles to thousands of small and cheap ones, drones and portable systems. Drones ranging from $500 to $50,000 are destroying tanks and ships worth hundreds of millions. Ukraine is producing about 10,000 low-cost quadcopter drones per month, and it plans to produce 1 million small drones during 2024. Look how interesting. In many improvised kamikaze drones, they place these two wires in the front, which upon contact at impact, detonate the explosive payload. Simple but efficient. So the idea now is to operate stealthily, with few units, having a low radar signature, and always with low financial cost and without risking the life of a pilot. In addition to conducting attacks with swarms of hundreds of drones, saturating defenses, in this video, during a military exercise, 103 micro drones are launched from 3F-18. The autonomous control is not individual for each drone. They operate as a collective brain, adapting to changes in the number of drones, remaining coordinated, and executing missions. That was in 2016. Imagine what it's like today. In 2023, the Pentagon launched the replicator program for the production of thousands of autonomous drones to compete with China. The goal is to develop mass production capabilities and reduce costs, something that China already does very well. And in May 2023, the US Army published a document requesting companies to submit proposals for dumb and cheap small drones capable of deploying existing bombs in their arsenal. But Anduril is not the only one competing for a share in this drone market. There are others, like Ocean Arrow with the Triton, the autonomous drone that can navigate with a sail on the surface or dive like a submarine. 
They are new companies trying to break into the top five giants currently in the U.S. defense sector. The main contractors went from 51 companies in 1993 to just five today, making it quite challenging for new competitors to enter. To have a chance, these smaller companies are taking a different approach, trying to fill a void left by the big ones, offering a low-cost product since it's challenging to compete with the budget of these giants, who also have decades of technology development. These new companies also cannot ignore incorporating some innovative technology, preferably with artificial intelligence, which is quite trendy. AI is the new Bluetooth. It has to be there even if not strictly necessary. The Happy Fork comes with a free mobile application that you can download on your iPhone or on your Android phone. Ultimately, it's still just a fork. However, now it's only a very intelligent fork. It's a smart fork. If I wasn't smart enough, then the fork had to be smart for me. Okay, and finally, if possible, the company needs to offer a ready-to-use product already developed and not wait for a contract to only then make a prototype. The thing that makes us special and the thing that makes us different from a lot of other contractors is that we use our own money to fund almost all of our research and development, and then we build products, and then we sell them after they're done. So we're usually not going to the government and saying, here's an idea, here's a white paper, you're going to pay for it whether it works or not. We're saying, look, we are going to use our own money on this. We're going to make sure that it works, and no matter what, if you're spending money on it, it is a sure thing. I just need to talk about one more vehicle from Enduril. This is the Sentry, an autonomous firefighting vehicle primarily designed for wildfires. And guess who developed it? Jamie from Mythbusters. In 2017, Jamie was hired by Enduril, but the vehicle doesn't appear on the company's website, so either it hasn't been finalized yet, as Jamie himself mentioned it would take a while for that to happen, or the project was abandoned. I hope not, because it would be a very useful vehicle. So, that's Enduril, the Flame of the West, the sword used by Aragorn in The Lord of the Rings. I mean, the company that makes autonomous drones controlled by an AI for the US defense sector, and they are in a bigger hurry than the US and UK saving democracies with newly discovered oil reserves. They are preparing for the possibility of a conflict between China and Taiwan, which they anticipate will happen by 2027. I mean, it's all about that. Everyone is talking about making sure that the capabilities that we're building today are ready to go for a fight in the Pacific in 2027 or earlier, because that is the latest that we see China trying to launch an offensive for a variety of reasons. That's the timing for some kind of action against Taiwan, which is critical to our economy. But a major challenge for Enduril will be proving that it can mass produce these drones. Oh, another pun from the company. The name Roadrunner is a reference to its competitor, Raytheon's Coyote, also a kamikaze drone that hunts other drones. They must have a whole department just to name things. And that's it. Thank you for your company, and until next time, 